Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Carpo. I'm sitting in the school bus and I'm going to talk about parenting for a minute. <sighs> Where do we start? There's absolutely nowhere to start. Being a parent is a damn hard job. It's one of the most thankless and uh, difficult jobs that there are out there. And hey, when I was 18, 19, I was a roofer. You know, I've been out there in the, the pouring rain on a soaking wet shake roof, tearing off three layers of shingles. I mean, it's raising kids is so much more difficult. At least when you're out there, you can take a break. Um, it's it's a completely different job, of course. You can't compare it. And anyone who's a parent has just grown into the role of what, you know, however they, they find parenting to suit them. Um, this video mostly entails how to... <laughs> I guess it'll probably end up being more of a ramble about parenting, but I have a few main points I want to make. First of all, Parenting means acknowledging the differences, not just in the parenting styles, but in our circumstances in our lives, as well as the differences in our kids' attitudes. No matter how much you set out with a good attitude of, oh, I'm going to raise my kids to be, you know, thankful and, and, and kind and, and sweet and have great manners, you know, that works, but only with some kids and only in certain circumstances and uh, certain methods. So... I'll start off by saying my, my experience, I guess, if you're going to talk about a job, you should give your job history. Uh, I met my wife when, uh, when her son was about three, I think three years old, he's just, just turning four, and we've been together ever since. So basically he's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, my son. He is now 23 years old. When he was about 15, um, my wife got pregnant and we had another, uh, another kid named named Emerson and then three years later had another kid so now we have the kids our kids are five nine I should say al almost six nine and 23 and uh, having the two younger brothers the siblings they're the exact same age spread as my brother and I were it's hell to have two boys that fight I mean I know that people say girls are harder in some circumstances that's probably true too um, sisters especially, but uh, sisters and brothers, you know, do have their great moments where they bond and, and they play and it's totally worth uh, uh, dealing with the, you know, the, the stressful times in order for them to have somebody to rely on, you know, and, uh, and somebody to talk to and play with. But raising a single child can make it much easier for you to kind of tailor parenting to that kid. When you have two kids, they're feeding off of each other. And, uh, they will tell you no, and then the other one will tell you no, and the younger one's always listening to the older one. So, here's the thing. My parenting generation was raised to believe that, well, you know, what's the best method? Well, we were told to get down on your kid's level and to look them in the eye, to be patient, uh, to not go overboard or to snap on them. Of course, no physical abuse, no spanking whatsoever. Um, that we needed to raise them to be tolerant and accepting and understanding. And that's what triggered me to do this video. I was reading a couple articles a couple days ago preparing to... I wanted to do a video about this subject by the end of the articles. Uh, originally it was just for my own information, but... Vastly different opinions, but one of them was saying that... Uh, you know, that the psychology of how parenting is changing. It says that a lot of parents go out and they buy all these books about all these diff the different stages of childhood development, and I, I didn't do that. I don't care to. I'm not, you know, not going to look at somebody else's parenting method and what works for them. But there is there are certain uh, common threads, you know, the things that you do learn, like reverse psychology. Everybody knows that, you know. Uh, but I don't want to play tricks on my kids. I want to be straightforward with them. I want my kids to grow up understanding, but here's the, the article I read was it was about raising kids that are tolerant. And I'll tell you, a few years ago, I had a totally different opinion on tolerance. I I would you probably find any of uh, several of my videos where I talked about how tolerance is the key, or you know, tolerance is what we need in order to understand the world. I eat my words. I don't believe that any longer, and I realize that semantics plays a huge role in this, which is you know the word play and how, the, how you define a word. There was a uh, quote that I came across. It said, "Tolerance to the effect of tolerance is a privilege only reserved for those who haven't faced any real adversity. Basically meaning that the people who have lived relatively sheltered lives tend to be the ones who can uh, complain the most and, and speak the loudest about all these injustices and problems. In other words, many of the social justice warriors that you'll see out there, you know, 
Some of them were trust fund kids who just wanted to put their energy out in a different way. Some people had nothing to do with money. It was just people who want something to fight against because we've, <laughs> I know that's a completely different story and I'm not trying to say that anybody out there fighting for justice is, you know, some sort of a spoiled punk at all. Um, but the attitudes of a lot of people, um, we've given kids, the whole generation of what they call millennials, uh, way too much space. And, and it took me a while to understand that. Tolerance, the word tolerance, it means to tolerate. Now, tolerating doesn't mean being accepting or being kind or, or um, you know, discussing the issues. Toleration means you tolerate something. You tolerate the heat on a hot day when you're sweating and you wish it would cool down. You, know, you tolerate the pain when you're suffering and there's nothing you can do about it. Tolerating doesn't, isn't a good word. <laughs> it's a very bad description. So mm -hmm. raising kids to be tolerant, in other words, it means you're telling them, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Now, I, I believed that for a time and I've seen how it's backfiring on society. If you tell your kids not to speak up, then they're not gonna speak up, not just if somebody looks different, but if somebody's acting different, say somebody's being crude or, or harsh and they say, well, I was always told to mind my own business. And it kind of goes back to what I said the other day about rude people and, and encountering them and saying, this is my community. I'm not going to put up with people harassing others, my neighbors. But, uh, you know, I think what happened was a lot of kids did want to stick up for each other, but they ended up fighting against all these injustices that they don't understand. And, um, and, and uh, I don't know, just getting pissed off at the world. Like a whole generation is pissed off at the world, but they're blaming it on all the old people, the old generation. And it just doesn't work that way. Uh, even... <laughs> Somebody recently, a kid said, that, you know, we need to get all the old people out of Congress. And I'm like, you know, that sounds like a great idea when you're 18 until you realize how much your opinions change and ideas change about what society is. It's a hierarchy, whether we like it or not. It's structured that way. Can we ever defeat that or overcome it? I don't think so, because humans have a natural propensity to seek leaders and to be leaders. There are people who are leaders and there are those who are followers. And, I was thinking about this earlier, how I would word it. There's leaders, and then there's followers. And then there are participants. The participants are the ones who uh, are in the society, but they're not really leading or following anyone. They're very just wary and cautious. And then there are what I call the shepherds. And those are the ones who are opting out of society's bullshit, but have to interact with it to a certain extent, but only to educate themselves enough to try to help their fellow man to not make the same mistakes that others have made. Um, sometimes it's even a do as I say, not as I do thing. I mean, the people who have made mistakes in their lives are the best presented to share those mistakes they made and, and uh, to say, this is how I got myself screwed over, don't make the same mistake. That's why addicts make the best drug counselors, um, or ex-addicts rather. <laughs> um, so what's happening to, I, I feel, is that we had a whole generation of kids growing up that were, were um, um, that were kind of trying to come into their own, that weren't being punished as the ruler slapped by the teacher kind of thing. So they had a lot more space, and even to today where I've seen kids literally spitting in teachers' faces and flipping them off and calling them names, I mean, that's completely unacceptable in any place in any setting but you would not see that back in the 50s right and we thought well it's because everybody was so strict and being strict is bad and discipline is bad it's not you know every, anybody who's had a dog who's who's acting out and that is doing things it's not supposed to do when that dog is punished you think that he would get pissed at you no they actually you'll find that your dog loves you more after you've punished him it's something that's ingrained within the minds of a lot of mammals, I don't know how many animals, but that if you're punished, you're almost thankful for saying thank you for keeping me in line. Kids are the same way. I've seen it over and over. A kid screaming and ranting at his parents, the minute that parent screams back and gets, you know, right in their face and makes their point, the kid cries for a minute and then they come back to their parent and they want to hug. They want to be accepted. They want to be loved, but they also want to be scolded and told when they're doing wrong. And some kids are spoiled brats and they were never taught what it means to be to have real adversity so they think tolerance is just putting up with everything <sighs> sorry i'm kind of rambling but i had a lot of different ideas in my head i think that what's happened is that a lot of parents have have uh, said my my kid can't sit still 
um, in class and he's just not paying attention. And he, my wife actually yesterday when we were going through some paperwork, she, or a couple days ago, she found one of my old report cards because my mom had brought over a folder of my old stuff and it was from sixth grade and it said, uh, it says, Josh is very bright and capable, but he's frustrating to work with because he doesn't do the assignments. And that was my, my story all the way through school. I graduated with the knowledge and passing the tests, but doing no homework. And basically my GPA, you know, I didn't have enough credits, didn't care. You know, for me, it was always about the knowledge, not about the numbers. And I sure as hell don't like being told to do extracurricular work outside of school. So I was a rebel. I was a stoner, skateboarder, ride off and do my own thing, skip school, smoke weed and all that. Uh, but I still went and I was dedicated to going to school and I learned the things I needed to learn, you know, but what but today now if kids are act like that the, the parents don't just say oh well my kid's a rebel he, they say he needs medication next thing you know well we've got a pill for that let's take some adhd medication let's put your kids on amphetamines <sighs> why not hey you know it might completely annihilate their you know chance at adulthood to lead a normal life by altering their brain chemistry as a youth but as long as it helps you as a parent to make things easier right and i'm not saying there isn't maybe some extreme cases where that's necessary but in general, I think that it's well overprescribed for kids who are just acting out. That's what kids do. Be a parent. Learn to deal with it, you know. There are times when I get so frustrated with, with my kids, but you know what? Uh, generally, they overcome whatever issue they're having pretty quickly. Um, studies have found that a lot of what's mis misdiagnosed as ADHD these days is actually a lack of sleep. The kids aren't getting enough sleep, and uh, it's, I guess, showing. Uh, through their attitudes. So there's one last thing I'd like to mention about this, you know, the internet factor. When I was growing up, we had video games like Atari, okay? When Atari, my dad got one. I remember we played Asteroids for hours one night. Um, then I had a ColecoVision. But these were things where you had a game, you'd get bored with it, you'd go outside and play. We didn't sit around and game for hours on end every day. When you have kids that are into games, it's very difficult to break them away. And we understand the psychology and what's going on in the brain much better now. It's that dopamine rush. It's just like cocaine, you know, the excitement of the game. And uh, so you have to teach your kids to understand that, or at least in my opinion, that's what I'm doing with my kids. I'm, I, I let him sit and watch shows about like uh, sometimes a TED Talks or something. One will come on about video game addiction and he'll sit there and watch it and they'll explain the dopamine, you know, system and how everything works. And. He's fascinated. He, he's, he knows, you know, he, he wants to, he has to be armed with the proper knowledge of what's going on in his brain. So he doesn't just think I'm the bad guy for saying no more games. Um, but we think the kids sometimes are just too young to know these things or too, no, I don't think so. I think that they're underexposed. I think we need to, you know, uh, stop with the, the hiding, you know, hiding the truth from them. Uh, but at the same time, they're kids, you know, they don't need to know everything. Um, it's never too late to learn how to be a parent. And that's the one thing, you know, I can admit that I've made mistakes over the years and I'm probably still making mistakes today. It doesn't matter how much, you know, my own mom might tell me or my wife's mom might tell her about their experiences with kids or how much their parents might have told them about their experiences with kids because every generation is immersed in something completely different and every person is completely different. And then we have the factor of different attitudes around different people. So all we can do is the best we can do. So in essence, I want to commend all the parents out there who do take the time to try their best, you know, to do their best and, and realize that their kids, they're just kids, you know, they're not going to be perfect. The best we can do is raise them to be good people. So it means don't talk down to them, but you don't have to treat them as an equal. There was somebody who pointed out the other day that somehow over the past decades, Children have become a form of a minority group, as if they have rights and privileges. And I'll tell you something, beyond being harassed by other adults, kids have no rights or privileges. <laughs> kids have the right to whatever their parents tell them to do. There are families who are being broken up over something like spanking a child. It's, you know, uh, CSD may help a lot of kids stay out of trouble, but at the same time, they're causing more problems probably than they're fixing. Breaking up families never did any good for anyone. So what do we do? That's one of the most difficult things. Different parenting styles require that we're patient with each other and that if somebody is, um, 
handling their kids in a certain way, it's really hard not to speak up. But you have to know whether that you know whether to draw the line. If somebody's slapping their kid, of course I'm going to say something. You know, that kind of abuse is totally unwarranted. But um, you know, as far as yelling at your kids, if you if you've never been a parent, don't even try to judge being a parent. Don't even try to judge other people you know that are parents or say I'd do better or I could do better because it's complete bullshit. It's a, a facade of, in your mind of, of what being a parent might be like. But we are changing along with our kids and uh, trying to do our own thing and live our own lives while raising kids. And uh, it's a very difficult thing. So it's a uh, trial and error, you know. Yeah, parenting. It's a some bitch. Take care, everybody, and uh, I'm going to sit back and drink my green matcha tea now. So delish. Mm, so delish. Thanks for watching. Any information you might want is in either in the description. Leave a comment, all that fun stuff, and I um, guess I better go in there and deal with my kids now. <laughs>